Hey guys, in this video we are going to discuss the importance of using template in your exam. Templates are commonly used by students in speaking and writing and in PT also in listening because in listening also there is one writing task where you can use the template. But there are many confusions and questions about using the template in the test and some of them are about the scoring or whether it is a good idea to use the template in the test or not. Uh, if someone is looking for a score of more than 79, should they be using the template or not? So these are the kind of questions people often ask and I thought that in this video I would answer all of those questions. If you're interested, keep watching until the end. So the question here is, should you use template or not? Or what is the benefit of using the template? And the answer to that is, templates are quite useful for those students who do not possess a good writing skill or good speaking skill or who takes uh, a lot of time to come up with the appropriate content in the exam and especially in speaking if you think too much it will affect your fluency and score in speaking is almost the score of fluency because people who tend to get higher score in fluency also get higher score in speaking overall and in case of writing if you have to think about the content as well as the presentation it takes a lot of time to complete your task um, and you have only fixed amount of time, especially in summarized written text, you have 10 minutes and in AC writing, you have 20 minutes. AC writing in particular can be quite challenging because sometimes the topic you get in the exam can be unfamiliar. And at other times, even if the topic is familiar, you may not have enough ideas to write in your AC. So if you have template, then you have less pressure of thinking about the presentation and because of that you can focus on content part more. And in essay writing, for example, out of 15 points you get in one essay, 12 points come from your presentation and only 3 points come from your content. So when you use the template, a large part of your task will be accomplished and you have only 3 points to gain from your content. So you have enough time to think about what you want to write and how you want to do that. So that is one of the benefits of using the template. Uh, the next question that people often ask me is, which is the best template or what template they should use if they are looking for a score of 50 or 65 or 79? And the answer to that question is, the best template is the one that you can use or the one that you have learned to use. There are many types of templates that you can get from the um, internet and all of these templates are equally good as long as they uh, address the evaluation criteria. So if the template is looking at all the evaluation criteria and those criteria have been implemented while designing the template, then they are good templates. The only thing you need to think about is um, to find the template which works for you, which is best for you. It should not be too difficult for you to memorize. It should not be too difficult for you to understand. And at the same time, it should have adequate words so that in the exam, you need to think less about the number of words and focus more on your content. And another thing is, if you try out too many different templates, then you'll just be wasting your time because all the templates, as I said, are equally good in getting this score because their only job is to uh, make it easy for you to write or present your ideas. Um, so if you spend too much time thinking about which template should I use, you will just be wasting your uh, resources and your time on doing something which may not help you much in getting the score you're looking for. Template is just a tool. So just like any other tool, it will make your work easier, but still you have to do your work. So the next question I often get is, how can everyone use the same template in the exam and get the score? Wouldn't that be plagiarism? Wouldn't they penalize us for just copying the content? And the answer to that is, unlike other exams or unlike other academic assignments where your performance is compared against the performance of others as well, in order to find out the similarities and in order to grade you as compared to others, in PT, your performance is compared against the possible answers in the database. And in other words, when you write an answer to a question, the system compares that answer with all the possible answers stored in the system and if they find that the answer you have written is comparable to a high quality answer stored in the database then they give you same kind of score but that also means that your answer will not be compared against other users and because of that even if two users are writing the exactly same answer the system will not be able to find out whether they were copying the same content or not so it's safe to use the template so far i've seen that Pearson has not implemented any other strategies to 
tackle with this problem. That means there is no way for them to find out if people are just memorizing content and writing the same content. So for now, you can continue using the template without any issue, without any fear. So if that is the case, then what is the most important thing for people who want to use the template or what is the best way to use any kind of template or any template you can find on the Internet? Then regarding that, what I think is the first is the time management, because the main reason we use the template in the exam is to make it quicker for us to write the answer so that we can spend more time on uh, content part or maybe on editing part. So when you are using the template, you must make sure that you can complete the template within the given time period. So when we are talking about, for example, summarized written text, you should be able to write the whole template within two or three minutes. For essay, you should be able to do this within five to six minutes. Now, there are other questions, for example, questions of speaking, where it is more important to find out how much time it takes for you to use the template. As an example, when you are using any kind of template in retail lecture, make sure that the template helps you to speak for at least 25 to 35 seconds. And the same applies to describe image as well. So what it means is, if you are using the template, it must help you to speak for at least 25 to 35 seconds. And if you speak less than that, that means the template does not have adequate content. And without adequate content, it will be difficult for the algorithm to assess your ability of speaking in terms of your fluency and pronunciation. So make sure that the template has uh, adequate length. And in order to measure that, try to see how much time it takes for you to write that template or use that template in case of speaking. So how should you get started with, with any template? The first and the most important thing as usual is practice. But how should you practice the template? Whenever you are planning to use any kind of template in the exam, it's important that you learn to type it, especially for writing questions. Because in summarized written text, summarized spoken text, and essay writing, you have to write the template. So it's really important that you learn to type the template and not just memorize it. Because this is one problem I've seen with many students. They memorize the template and go to the exam thinking that they will remember anything. But those of you who may have appeared in the exam before, you may have realized this that during exam, we often forget the template and the confidence that we had about being able to remember the template just disappears, just vanishes. So it's important that you, when you, you are practicing the template, you practice by typing the template. And while doing this practice, there are three things you must remember. Yeah, there are three things you must keep in mind. The first is try to remember the structure of the sentence. So in what way they have written the sentence? And is it possible for you to modify that structure or not if you want to? The second thing is make sure you can spell all the words in the template because in terms of spelling, in those question types where spelling is assessed, for if you make more than one mistake in spelling, then you get zero in spelling. So you don't want to memorize a template and then misspell the word in the template and lose the score because of that. So make sure that you can spell all the words in the template and also think about the punctuations, learn about the punctuations used in the templates so that you use them in the right place. Make sure that you remember where comma was used, where full stop was used, where any other punctuation signs were used. Because these things are as important as memorizing the template itself. So then the next question is, how many questions should we practice to make sure that we are proficient in using the template? Uh, there is not any arbitrary number here. I mean, I can't tell you that you have to practice five or 10 or anything. But what I have seen with my experience is if anyone practices at least 15 to 20 questions, then most of the times they become comfortable with the template and they can use it without any problem in the exam. So my suggestion here is practice as many questions as you can. If you have more time, practice more questions, but make sure that at least you have practiced 15 to 20 questions. And it's not just practice, by the way, you need to get feedback as well. You don't want to repeat the same mistake without knowing about them. If you don't get feedback, that's what you'll be doing. You might be repeating the same mistake, thinking that that will help you to remember the template. But in the exam, you'll just be making the same mistake that you used to make during your practice. So make sure that you go to your tutors, ask them whether you are using their template in the way they wanted you to use or not.
and if there is any issue with your writing or if there is any misunderstanding then they can help you to get rid of that so it's really important for you to do that these templates are prepared by someone else for you which means you may have understood them in a different way than they actually wanted you to understand so this is a very crucial part of using the template in your test you have to consult with the person who prepared the template so that you understand what their intentions were when they used certain words structures or layout in the template now in the day of the test how should we use the template i mean when will you get time to use the, uh, the template especially in speaking for example when will you have time to um, recall the template so regarding that what i tell my students is you must have a strategy to recall the template in the test you must know how you are going to do this and what i tell them is if they are planning to use template in retail lecture and describe image they must write this template in the extra time they have during read aloud so when you are doing read aloud, you get 40 seconds to prepare and then 40 seconds to speak. Most students require only around 20 seconds. So the extra time you have during read aloud can be used to write the template for your describe image and retail lecture. And then later on, when you do describe image or retail lecture, you'll just be reading from your paper, from your notebook. Just keep in mind one thing. When you're reading from a paper, then you tend to be monotonous. You tend to sound more like you're reading than you're speaking. So when you are using the template and you're reading from your note, pretend that you're speaking with someone, you are presenting to someone. In order to do that, make hand gestures so that the um, intonation automatically comes in your presentation and rhythm automatically comes in your presentation. That's a very important thing for you to do. And in writing part, when you go for summarized written text, just type the template first. Then you start reading the question, that means the paragraph, and then get the important ideas from the paragraph, insert them in the template. If you are doing AC writing, again, read the question, identify what type of question is that. Once you know this is, let's say, agree, disagree type of question, then start typing the agree, disagree template. Finish that template. Once the template is done, now start thinking what you need to complete the gaps in the template. Take help from the question and complete those gaps. So remember, what I said is you must first write the template before you start thinking how to complete the template. The reason for this is often when students are thinking about ideas, they get stuck at one point. And when they get stuck, that interferes with their thinking and sometimes they might forget the rest of the template. So this way what happens is you may come up with a brilliant idea, but you will not remember the template to use that idea. And that's a disaster. So what you should do is write the template first and then start thinking what you need to complete the template. Another advantage of this approach is you'll never run out of words. You'll always be able to meet the minimum word requirement. And not just that, it will give you a boundary and there is very less chance of going out of the topic. So the template will already have created a boundary for you. And then the next thing is stay prepared for anything. And what I mean by that is Sometimes in your exam, you might feel like the template you are using may not be appropriate for a particular type of question. And that happens sometimes. And if that is the case, you can slightly modify the template so that it suits the purpose of the question. In order to do that, you have to do some extra practice. And this is perhaps not something required for people looking for 50 plus and 65 plus, but for people looking for 79 plus, they must learn how to modify the template according to the context in the question. Otherwise, they have to be lucky so that their template matches with the question. And in order to understand these subtle differences in questions, and because of that, the differences in the requirement of the question, you must again consult with your tutors ask them whether you have properly answered all the questions asked or you have missed something or you have gone slightly out of topic if you do this this will help you to address any situation in the exam the next thing is do mock test or mock mini test these tests are designed especially at roman pt we have designed this test to simulate the actual ex exam environment so when you do this test you'll feel uh, you'll have the same feeling as you will have in the exam and what we have done here is the timer the way the question is asked the interface everything mimics the actual user interface and the feel of the exam so when you do this you'll have many advantages the first is you'll feel more familiar with the exam structure second is you'll 
be able to find out whether you can finish your template within the given time or not. And third is, after completing the test, you can get a score or feedback from the tutors. So you can ask tutors, you can ask tutors at Roman PT to give you personalized feedback. So rather than just knowing uh, that you can get only 50 in your speaking, you'll also be able to find out why only 50 and why not 60 or 70 or 80. Because the problem with many evaluation software out there is they will only tell you where you stand, but they will not tell you why. So for example, you might get 50 in uh, fluency, but you will not have any idea why 50 or let's say 67 in pronunciation, but why 67 in pronunciation in one exam or maybe 19 in another exam. So these feedback from experienced tutors will help you understand that so that you know what your strength is and you also know what your weakness is and what you should avoid. And the uh, last thing from my side is if you want to learn about all these things and want to watch more videos, want to practice more questions, head into our website. Uh, by visiting the links on, on the screen right now. On our website, you'll be able to join our free classes and free courses. And during this corona uh, epidemic, we are providing free live classes for everyone. And you can also sign up for that. You simply have to go to our website and sign up for our free courses. So that's it for today. If you have any questions about what I discussed in today's video, you can write in the comments. If you have any other queries, you can send us email. In order to send email, head onto our website and from there you can send us email as well. Until our next video, stay safe, stay at home and all the best for your exam.